my mind, mind that this was, uh, in journalistic terms, a major world scoop, a major newspaper scoop of international significance. This story was definitive in that it proved beyond doubt that Israel had a nuclear capability, but not only that, it proved it had a very sophisticated uh, nuclear capability, not just a couple of bombs a year, but an assembly line of bombs using the most sophisticated and advanced nuclear technology. And the result of this story was to place Israel as the world's sixth nuclear power. As a result of what we got from Venunu, it was now clear that Israel deserved to be up there alongside France, Britain, China as a major nuclear nation. today as we have in the past over the past several years to remember a brother of faith and courage who continues to languish in Ashkelon prison in Israel Mordecai Venunu we are here to commemorate the 19th anniversary of his abduction and imprisonment his nine years in solitary confinement and as we have in the past, we, we come here to appeal to the Israeli government in the name of the God of mercy and justice and compassion to release Mordecai Venunu. Mordecai Venunu is a former nuclear technician who worked in Israel on Israel's secret nuclear weapons program. And because he told the world about Israel's nuclear secrets. He was abducted, tried in secret in Israel, and sentenced to 18 years in prison. Nine years later, he continues to languish in prison, and there are thousands of people around the world who demand his release introduce uh, our brother Sam Day, who is the coordinator of the U.S. campaign to free Mordecai Venunu. Uh, Sam has recently... Hello, everybody. I want to know, I want you to be aware, first of all, who the previous speaker was. Most of you know Art Raffin, but there may be some of you who uh, don't realize the key role that Art's been playing. Yeah. Okay. Um, some of you may not be aware of the key role that Art in particular and the Dorothy Day Catholic Worker community in general have been playing over the last three years in focusing the uh, U.S. campaign to free Mordecai Benunu here in the nation's capital. And uh, they have been out here year after year, uh, particularly on the anniversary of the kidnapping of Mordecai Venunu, and they have been here month after month in uh, small but very persistent vigils to remind the state of Israel through the embassy that uh, the world is watching, 
and that the world has not forgotten Mordecai Venuto. And that, once again, is one of the reasons why we're here today, close to the ninth anniversary of the kidnapping of Mordecai Venuto. We don't have a very large number here, but we have people who believe very deeply that Israel needs to be reminded of the of what it's doing to a to one of its own citizens, of the torture to which they're subjecting an individual who acted purely out of conscience, with no motive whatever, except to share with his countrymen and with the world the deep dark secret of Israel's entry into the nuclear weapons club. Not just a token entry as South Africa has, has had done, not just a futile effort to go nuclear as uh, perhaps Iraq and uh, North Korea thought of doing, but a truly massive entry to the point where the government of Israel now has somewhere between 100 and 300 sophisticated warheads of advanced design. So that was Mordecai Venunu's gift, a free gift to his uh, fellow country people and a free gift to all of us in the world of the knowledge of the awful truth that nuclear weapons had been introduced into the Middle East. And for that he has been, uh, he has been maligned, perjured, pictured as a spy and a traitor, and uh, consigned to a living hell, a, a cell measuring six feet by nine feet in Israel's maximum security prison at Ashkelon, and uh, now for a total of nine years, and still with another nine years to serve. And he's been on there under conditions which have been condemned by many, many groups, including Amnesty International, which has looked into it and uh, condemned the confinement of Israel as cruel and inhuman and degrading punishment, and has called for his release. Mordecai Venunu has been the subject of a worldwide movement. Uh, we here in Washington today are only a tiny fraction of the worldwide uh, movement that does call for not only the release of Mordecai Venunu, but the celebration of what he did. And so we are here to tell our friends and loved ones in that embassy that, uh, that the world is watching and that uh, they should feel shame for their violation of their, of their own principles of Judaism and of, uh, and of Israel itself in, uh, in torturing a human being as they are doing to Venuto. We are here to talk to our own government. We are Americans. We're not Israelis. And we're here to reproach our own government tenfold for the crime against Venuto. Because this is not just something that little Israel is doing by itself. Israel's development of nuclear weapons and Israel's uh, punishment, exemplary punishment of the uh, of a person who tried to blow the whistle on that is being done with the knowledge and with the consent of the United States. Amen. And it is our country which is the patron of Israel, not only in nuclear affairs, but across the board, militarily and economically. It is our country which, had it, if it had the, the desire, could apply the pressure not only to free Benunu, but to uh, acknowledge its possession of nuclear weapons and to get out of the nuclear weapons business, which is what Venunu wanted done. No more nukes in Israel. Uh, but our government is not doing it, obviously, and one reason it's not doing it is because the state of Israel uh, does the dirty work of the United States in the Middle East. Israel is the strategic surrogate of the United States in the Middle East. and. Uh, in its development of nuclear weapons, Israel is simply following the lead of the United States itself. And we have an agenda with our own government, our infatuation with, with weapons of mass destruction, our continuing design, production, and deployment of nuclear weapons despite the end of the Cold War and the collapse of the Soviet Union. And we are here not so much just to point the finger at Israel, 
but to use this anniversary in order to challenge the, our own government's development of nuclear weapons and challenge the hypocrisy of our own government, the double standard where it looks the other way uh, with regard to Israel's nuclear weapons and then goes to war or threatens war against the puny efforts of third world states like North Korea and Iraq to, uh, to, to even get a few nuclear weapons. And so long as that hypocrisy exists, then there will be no real advance towards true uh, ending of the proliferation of nuclear weapons. Nunu is an unusual person who risked his liberty and his very life in order to tell the truth to his people. And he, he uh, has exerted a tremendous amount of risk and is paying a tremendous punishment. As such, he serves as an inspiration and an example to us to redouble our own efforts to address nuclear secrecy and nuclear business as usual in our own government. Let us not forget that Israel's venture into weapons of mass destruction is a little tiny pinprick compared with our own development of these massive weapon systems. The real problem in the world, the nuclear problem, is not Israel. Israel is merely a symptom of the problem of nuclear proliferation. The real problem is the proliferation within the United States, the continuation of the nuclear arms uh, infatuation despite the rhetoric of the Bush and the Clinton administrations. I'm John Steinbach, for those of you who don't know, know me, and we're here to call for the release of Mordecai Venunu and to call for the abolition of nuclear weapons in the Middle East and around the world. And I just heard on the news this morning, uh, James Baker had a press conference yesterday and announced that during the Gulf War, had Iraq used chemical or biological weapons, that George Bush had made a decision to use nuclear weapons. So if anyone here has any illusions about the importance of our work and that our work is not far from over, uh, this is just another example of the continuing real political use of nuclear weapons. I, I also want to introduce a very special guest who's with us and uh, the reason we cannot stay for the entire afternoon. Mr. Karisu is here from Hiroshima, Japan. Mr. Karisu uh, was 11 years old when the bomb was dropped and he, was, he attended the elementary school at Ground Zero, the elementary school that was totally vaporized. Uh, fortunately, he was away from the city when the bomb was exploded. <laughs> Sue Frankel Strait will now read a poem written by Mordecai Venunu. I am your spy. I am the clerk, the technician, the mechanic, the driver. They said, do this, do that, don't look left or right, don't read the text. Don't look at the whole machine. You are only responsible for this one bolt, for this one rubber stamp. This is your only concern. Don't bother with what is above you. Don't try to think for us. Go on, drive. Keep going. On, on. So they thought, the big ones, the smart ones, the futurologists. There is nothing to fear, not to worry. Everything's ticking just fine. Our little clerk is a diligent worker. He's a simple mechanic. He's a little man. Little men's ears don't hear. Their eyes don't see. We have heads. They don't. Answer them, he said to himself, said the little man, the man with the head of his own. Who is in charge? Who knows where this train is going? Where is their head? I, too, have a head. Why do I see the whole engine? Why do I see the precipice? Is there a driver on this train? The clerk, driver, technician, mechanic looked up. He stepped back and saw. What a monster. Can't believe it. Rubbed his eyes and, yes, it's there all right. I'm all right. I do see the monster. I'm part of the system. I signed this form. Only now I am reading the rest of it. 
This bolt is part of a bomb. This bolt is me. How did I fail to see? And how do the others go on fitting bolts? Who else knows? Who has seen? Who has heard? The emperor really is naked. I see him. Why me? It's not for me. It's too big. Rise and cry out. Rise and tell the people. You can. I, the bolt, the technician, the mechanic. Yes, you. You are the secret agent of the people. You are the eyes of the nation. Agent spy. Tell us what you've seen. Tell us what the insiders, the clever ones, have hidden from us. Without you, there is only the precipice. Only catastrophe. I have no choice. I'm a little man, a citizen, one of the people. But I'll do what I have to. I've heard the voice of my conscience, and there's nowhere to hide. The world is small, small for Big Brother. I'm on your mission. I'm doing my duty. Take it from me. Come and see for yourselves. Lighten my burden. Stop the train. Get off the train. The next stop, nuclear disaster. The next book, the next machine. No, there is no such thing. He completed his army service with commendation and in 1976 started to work as a nuclear technician at Dimona, the nuclear center, 30 miles away. During this time, he studied philosophy at Beersheba University and became interested in politics. He took part in political demonstrations and in 1982 opposed Israel's invasion of the Lebanon. This was an important time for him. It led him to question the activities at Dimona and whether Israel's nuclear weapons program should be kept secret from its people. Israel has not signed the non-proliferation treaty and does not allow international inspections of Dimona. The history of Israel's statements to the world and to the Israeli public about its nuclear weapons program is a long chain of lies and deception. The Nuno was considered one of the greatest traitors uh, to the Jewish people. And I, I doubt that you will find much sympathy here for, for his cause. I accept that we're not here in a popular cause. We're here as people who passionately believe in human rights, even for those who are genuine criminals. Well, in this case, it's a very difficult decision for the Israeli government. We are aware of public opinion. We are aware that he's done something that he was, goes deeply against the grain of the opinion of most Israelis, we respect that. But having said that, when a human being is kept in solitary confinement for eight years for doing something in accord with his own conscience, then we feel that both the terms of international justice and the terms of Jewish commitment to humanity, Jewish commitment to the prophets of Israel, means that Israeli people should be willing, yes, if it calls for sacrifice on their part, to make the sacrifice of setting this man who has not suffered a great deal free. חשוב לדעת שגם בישראל יש אזרחים, גם אם הם יהיו את היום, שסבורים שמורחי בנונו לא רק שהוא לא מרגל ולא בוגד, אלא הוא איש אמיץ, שעשה את חובתו האזרחית בכך שהוא גילה לעולם דרך העיתונות החופשית, שישראל מייצרת נשק גרעיני. מאחורי גבם של האזרחים, בלי אה, לשאול את רשותם ובלי לעשות על זה דיון ציבורי. אנחנו סבורים שבנון הוא לא רק שלא מגיע לו בית סוהר, אלא הוא איש אמיץ שמגיע לו פרס נובל לשלום, ואכן הוא גם מועמד. For us he is a hero because he dared to obey the dictates of his conscience. But of course we understand that in Israel he is regarded as a traitor because he broke the law. But I would remind you again of the Nuremberg Principles. If only some people in Hitler's Germany had broken the law, had really broken the law, and enough people had broken the law to stop Hitler and Nazism. Good evening. Uh, can you go there? Why did you come to Israel to try to convince uh, President Weizmann to release Mr. Vanunu uh, from jail 
Uh, do you want to intervene uh, in uh, Israel domestic politics? We believe that uh, Mordechai Benunu is not a spy. He did not sell the secrets of his country to a hostile How do you know? We know this because we have it on, we know this from our information from the Sunday Times. He did not sell it. It has been categorically denied by the Sunday Times, by the editor of the Sunday Times, and all the insight, excuse me, allow me to speak, by the entire insight team that he ever received or asked for money. He was obeying, if you like, a higher law than the law of a state, which is the law of humanity, it's the law of love thy neighbor. He believed that the production of nuclear weapons, weapons of mass destruction, which would kill whole civilians, populations, was a matter of legitimate debate in a democracy. He was not allowed to say, to speak about this subject in his own country, because the censorship was very strong. You know that. So he had to be out of the country to do so. Monsieur, Monsieur, I must say that in the 25 years that have passed since we have since we dinner had lunch together, for lunch, uh, you, you, you haven't changed much except perhaps some of your ideas. Uh, I mean, don't, you say, don't you think that uh, it's not very civilized to meddle in another country's affairs? We feel that this is something that transcends states and countries. This is a, 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 a subject of humanity. Uh, this is a subject of the nuclear nuclear proliferation concerns us all, regardless of barriers. But you have, you have in Britain, you have in Britain, 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 we do, and we fight against having nuclear weapons in Britain. We are against so you must let weapons. us do with what we want to do with our nuclear weapons. No, it's I'm our afraid. affair, it's our state, it's our but lives. You haven't admitted. admitted. You will not live or die with what is happening to us. Excuse me. Excuse me. You have not admitted publicly, officially. I have a few weapons at all. Uh, excuse me. To having nuclear weapons in this country. It's this not, has never been it's officially not your, acknowledged. It's none, of your, it's, it's none of your business. But I'm sorry, I'm, t I'm saying to you that I think the matter of nuclear weapons and nuclear proliferation is a matter beyond yeah, people. It is the, these are weapons of mass like destruction your parents, which will kill whole civilian populations. Your parents and grandparents didn't really interfere when my but grandparents were killed in Auschwitz. Excuse so you me, just think you were defending us. Don't say this to oh, me. Oh yes, I'm telling you. Oh, the right I'm thing. telling you listen, because we listen are defending to me. ourselves. Your president yesterday yes. listened to us. He had the courtesy to listen to us. He welcomed us into the presidential he palace made a and he welcomed and listened to us. So do you need the, uh, the courtesy to listen to him too? Yes, but he's interrupting me. He must, if he asks me questions, he must wait for my answers. But uh, you didn't let him finish his question. But he doesn't let me finish. I see. So maybe you both will finish. Please. Please, if you want to finish your answer, please. I think, I, I'm waiting for our question. My question, I want you to understand something. Most people here are survivors of the Holocaust. I understand. We don't trust your goodwill or anybody's goodwill to defend ourselves. We have to defend ourselves at the best of our abilities. And you have no moral rights. European Christians have no moral rights to interfere with our faith because you let us down once. <laughs> Thank you. You can continue to talk to him. I'm sure. I'm sorry. Perhaps it, but I can say to the audience, the program may have finished, but I'll say to you, perhaps if more people in my country, in Britain, 
had protested 60 years ago about what was happening to the Jewish people in Germany, then the Holocaust might not have happened. And that is why I respect Mordecai Bermino, and that is why we say he's not a spy. We come to plead for clemency. Oh, he's not even a spy, he sold his story for a good man. He did not sell his story, that is a lie. That is a lie. That is a lie for which you have no evidence. <laughs> Thank you.